Are you paying your rates? Yes, we are paying our rates, obviously. <laughs> if you're paying our rates, why, why, why are we paying our rates? Where's the money going to? Right, right. What are you doing with the money? Who represents these people? At least if someone will come to and address you, and if you're not going to address us, at least do your job. Sure, that's sure. just the basics. Yeah. I think that's what people would want. It has been uh, a mammoth task on suing anyone for rates, even I think you can um, remember the time when we had to set uh, debt collectors on our people, it was a, an outcry. To an extent even the, the politics of the day would even come away from us and say, but in, in, in financial terms, uh, you have to pay. If you don't pay, you are either disconnected or you are arrested. That's, that's period. So my appeal to to people is honor your bills in time so that the services are also done in time. Was the the egg and the chicken uh, situation which comes first, the dollars or the service? The current challenges we have in the city, we cannot remove the city of Harare from the matrix uh, of, 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 of causing the problems. But again, we cannot exonerate the central government uh, from uh, 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 contributing towards these problems. Um, as a resident body representing citizens, uh, we have been, we have seen a delay in uh, the approval of council budgets uh, by the central government or by the Ministry of Local Government. And we, we have seen the delay of implementation of, of devolution. And uh, devolution, uh, if well implemented and also uh, have sufficient legislation, which is democratic, can be able to improve uh, service provision. So again, the, the problems we are having uh, in, our, in our local authority, uh, mainly they emanate from, from policy, they emanate from 
legislation they emanate from practices uh, that are, are contributing uh, towards collab collapse of, of service delivery just back to water you know you spoke of the devolution fund yes. uh, didn't council secure a loan from the china export import bank yeah. to um you know refurbish the morton jeffrey water treatment plant uh, yet you also are depending on devolution funds to fix the same water how how much assistance do you need for this and what's happening to those funds because that was quite a lot of money that was 144 million dollars Yes. And now you still need devolution funds on top of that to fix the water. What's I would like to understand those figures and what happened to that loan and why you also need the devolution funds that have been released now to again go to water treatment. Yeah, you know, uh, like I said, on the master plan, there's the water and the sewer master plan as well. Yes, yes. That is coming with, yes. the, with the master plan, where it is talking of the consume Sam and whatever, right. to be on, on, on the master plan. Right. And the, the improvements, the, the replacement and improvements of the of the infrastructure, mm -hmm. coming to the 144 that you are referring mm -hmm. to, it was actually coming here for the uh, pumping of, of of the water systems, the Moton Jeffrey, the Warren Control, the Letombo, the Alex Park, uh, the uh, uh, ZBC. Pockets, you, all those pumping uh, areas. So it was for the pumps, not for the treatment of the water? The treatment and the pumps. Okay. Yes. Right. So that one, as we are speaking now, the reason why you are seeing much of the water flowing everywhere or the best coming, it is because we have actually sorted the pumping and increased the pump, mm -hmm. into, the pump the, into, into the old and absolute infrastructure, the delivery system, the, 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 the pipes that are delivering from Moton Jeffrey Warren Control to our homes, they are rotten. So the, the push that is coming from the pumps is too much now. ask you who are the land barons we are trying to unearth who are the real land barons but the very unfortunate thing is those that have been uh, robbed of their hard-end uh, money are not in the free to tell us who the land barons are or whom are they paying those uh, money to um, what I want to know from you is the land barons, right? Mm -hmm. Who are they? If you sell land without authority or title, you're a criminal, period. Mm -hmm. If you go around, you can't go around selling people's assets. Mm -hmm. The state is the owner. The president controls all the state land. The local authorities control all the land. They have title to that land. The state gave them that land so that they can become a local authority. Right. In which capacity? Are you, as Comrade Ningi, or Sisi Ningi, or you know Honorable Ningi, selling land? Mm -hmm. So, so I've said it, and I think you've seen my Twitter feed. Right now, the attacks that we are all getting as government are not, which shows you that how, how we are so intertwined with mediocrity, is that we even have a lot of these people in the ruling party. We have a lot of these people in the opposition. Land barons are everywhere. They're there. If cool. you go on the ground right now. The amount of people who've been name dropping His Excellency's name, wearing his t-shirts, mm. it's pathetic. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are sitting at branch level, they're sitting at district level, and they're sitting even at provincial level. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it because I'm risking my life doing this every day. Mm. So, so I've come to a point where whether I keep quiet, I'm targeted. Mm. Whether we decide to look the other way, we'll be targeted. And His Excellency has given us a mandate. And we, that's why I say the truth should set us free. Let's stop politicking, uh, politicians going and saying, oh, land barons, oh, land barons, when they are happening right under people's noses. So these land barons, are they necessarily from one political party? No, they're from all political parties. 
If you go right now, you know what? The problem in Zimbabwe, and maybe it's because we, we've, we've lived in the diaspora for so long, but when we, when, when we want to shape the future, we need to start talking facts. Mm. If you go right now into Kwadzana, if you go right now into some of the, the southern suburbs, mm. they'll tell you, you decide in the ZANPF, you decide in the MDC. Mm. It's, everyone knows it. Mm. And they'll tell you, ukunem temoyo, ukunem temoyo. that's utter nonsense. Mm. That should not happen. Mm. We are all citizens of Zimbabwe. We are all living in Harare. We are residents of this province. And you should all be paying your monies to the local authority that provides your service delivery, mm. not to honorable so-and-so or to comrade so-and-so, cannot chef so-and-so. And I've said it before, Ruvenego, that if His Excellency can say it in Politburo, why should us as government officials be afraid to say what His Excellency is saying in Politburo? Mm. So who are you fighting then? And how are you going to crack the whip? Because you've described, like you said, syndicate, I said cartel, whichever it is, it's an entire system that is, um, has penetrated the entire value food chain, so to speak, from the top all the way down to the bottom. How do you fix that? It's like trying to fish out Pablo Escobar. How long did that take? You know, okay. because every single person is paid off, like you said, mm -hmm. or they're benefiting. Mm -hmm. So how do you break a system like that? How? Where do Make you start? The first rule of change management is preach the gospel, mm -hmm. but don't expect people to be born again. You keep doing the deeds. What we're doing right now is what is needed. What we're doing right now on this show. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's make corruption dirty. Let's make it a pandemic. Let's make it disgusting, such that you don't want your name associated with land barons. But as long as we create a sacredness, we don't talk about it. Ah, but in June, chef. And we allow these people to amass so much wealth, you know? And just understand how anybody can build a house without council noticing. A house doesn't go up overnight. So for establishments and developments to happen and grow, for a house to go up, it could take months, right? Where was council before these structures were up? Uh, I'll be very honest with you. Some of the buildings were built uh, overnight though it is difficult to do so, but it is happening in some instances. Uh, save for very big mansions that you are somehow seeing now, and uh, in the eyes of the enforcers, it will be purported as uh, authorized to be there. Thanks for, for, for the new dispensation now. We are somehow getting uh, assistance from the ZRP and what have you, but uh, uh, Lately, we were not able to do and execute even our court orders. Mm -hmm. You can even check on our court orders. Some are dating 2014, 2013, simply because at that time, the powers be would not allow it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was actually political. Right. Let's look into um, the issue of the, the, who's the victim in this whole chain, right? Yeah. Where we talk of land barons. Mm -hmm. There's an innocent young family who bought land from a landlord mm -hmm. and who owned um, they call them Magadin and Munani Garden Rake or Tengesa sections of that land, right? They yes. sublet. Yes. And this innocent person, this young family who's just starting off, manages to buy and I so know some of the figures at some point were two hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars. Mopuaka section can you come no two bed ne toilet. And it so these have now accumulated and now we are in a situation where there are so many of them, and these areas are now overpopulated. Mm -hmm. The victim, when you say we are demolishing these homes, mm -hmm. the victim is that young family who invested yeah, that awesome. 200, four years ago, or whatever. Sure. What are we doing about this? Because we need to deal with it. Yes, you know, um, law is law, but there is also surely a socialist element to this, the human side of it. Mm -hmm. um, how do we look at that? Because you seem firm in the areas you're going to demolish um, and say that these are illegal structures, there's nothing you can do about it. But what about that? family. The saddening thing is the people, those innocent people, mm. are somehow not innocent in, the, in, in our eyes. Why? They are refusing to tell us who is who. This week, I visited Budirido. Right. Some of those in, 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 uh, houses are flooded now. Mm -hmm. And uh, one way or the other, we have to evacuate those people. Mm -hmm. We are talking with government mm -hmm. where we are looking for land. 
that we are going to properly um, develop mm -hmm. before settling people there. Mm -hmm. But our, our aim is that not of putting people to unsafe the land. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, say that issue be a issue, a issue of the past. So you say you're speaking to government for land that you can develop yes. before settling these people under you. Are we going to get this land before you demolish? The land uh, is already in the process, mm -hmm. but the danger of telling people we have found land, mm -hmm. you can wake up again tomorrow seeing it in very... Uh, but not going to change overnight. Is the land there and have you started servicing the land? No, the services are yet to, to start, but we have, we have actually uh, identified yeah. and uh, agreed on the roadmap now. How is it that government often gets accused for these things? People will say government needs to house people, government needs to fix the roads, government needs to fix this. Where and when and how does council take ownership for what really is your jurisdiction? We are a tire of government, so we are one. Government and us, we are one. So there are three tires in this, in this, in this nation. There's the central, the central government, the provincial, and the uh, local authority, which is where we are. So we need to work as one. And what do you understand about the role of um, the role of city council versus the role of government? I okay, two different things. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think the city council is in charge of making sure everything is running smoothly. Mm -hmm. So from water, bean collection grass cutting and everything. I don't think the government is involved in that. Yeah. So my take is it's not the government, it's the city council and they need to step up. So regards understanding the role of city council versus the role of government, who would you put all of this on? Is it a council thing? Is it a government thing? I would put it on to council mainly because the, we're talking about a suburb and the suburb is situated in Harare mm. and uh, the government uh, the government or the federal government is for the whole of Zimbabwe it looks after Mashona land and all the other provinces so when when it comes to city council they have the they they have they can afford to give each sub, suburb attention because mm -hmm. the government can't do that mm. so at the end of the day it's uh, it's, it mainly comes down to the fact that city council don't do their job. It's true, uh, we can see they don't do their job. And uh, I think it comes down to, I hate to say this, but it's corruption. Yeah. And um, we talk about your wage bill as well as council. Yeah. And the cars that some of your managers are seen driving around. Your worship. Yeah. And why is your wage bill still so high? Uh, the, the wage bill, I, I would say, not not uh, defending it, but it is something that is fixed. By fixed, I mean if we collect ten dollars today, mm -hmm. the salaries, if they are nine 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 dollars, they will still remain nine dollars. But whose if you wages collect... are fixed in this day and age, in this economy? No, the... you can't just say it's fixed regardless of you know you adjust, don't you? True. Yeah. Yes. Surely you adjust. You adjust based on the currency based on the uh, inflation rate, yeah. based on the reality, based on the pandemic. True. Yeah. We are, we are, why it is fixed? It is the nature of the employment in, in council, mm -hmm. which is uh, open-ended, and that, that becomes uh, fixed. We have actually moved now to performance-based contracts, which is not everyone. But the new ones are actually coming on the fixed term contracts or fixed uh, performance contract. Mm -hmm. But the rest who were there, who are yet to retire, mm -hmm. are actually on, on, on open ended. Mm -hmm. And that makes the, the salary bill fixed. Yes. And the, the other thing that I might, I might, I must not uh, forget to mention, it is the budget. This time around, which is historical. It was approved before January 1. <laughs> yeah. And it is, it is a new thing. Mm. And the, for the donkey years, it was either approved in November or uh, December, but this time it was approved mm -hmm. uh, December for the ensuing year, for the, year, year, for the ensuing right. year, not right. the current year. Wow. 
So which makes our life easy? Your worship, I don't know when the last time you went to a taxi rank was. And did you go? But not about rank, pay pay. Before even looking for a bathroom, mm. you can locate where it is just from the smell. True. It has been years that this has been the problem for such a public place. And people are upset right now with the lockdown. Some people say the lockdown is not fair, that it does not uh, cater to the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. Those informal traders, the SMEs, Kuti, this again, where I say council must take ownership. Let's assume government decided to have a partial lockdown where they allow for, uh, you know, Anasia saw Gudvarambe Vakavurwa. Practically speaking, how do we have that kind of market open where there's no running water? Okay? They can't even sell these fruits and vegetables that are going to be consumed by people in a COVID pandemic. What do you say about that? Because we can talk of land barons all day, but let's talk about the day to day, hand to mouth feeding of the people? Yes, the first thing that I would want to, to share with you, Rufenego, is um, we have got a very serious infrastructure backlog in our, in our, in our city, mm -hmm. where we need to improve and make sure that the infrastructure is up to scratch. And the, one of those infrastructures is the, uh, the toilets mm -hmm. that are for public toilets. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the sewer lines, they need to be replaced and upgraded. Mm -hmm. By upgrading, I mean you can still be saving Mbari with a 100 millimeter pipe mm -hmm. because of the growth. Mm -hmm. You now need to replace it with somehow 200 or 300 millimeter pipe to cater for the development. Mm -hmm. And uh, the CSOs and the um, Pezanamo that were crossed. It is actually uh, trying to uh, correct the problems that might be associated with the COVID spreading. Those are the spreaders. But you do if know that there are some areas in the world, especially in Africa, where markets are a big part of um, people's sustainability. Mm -hmm. They have managed to keep their markets open because they have structures. Mm -hmm. They have um, buckets of water, Anditika. Yes. They have running water in the bathrooms nearby. Mm -hmm. And they've managed to say, observe physical distancing when you are going to the market. Yes. They even have stickers on the floor that show a one meter distance when you're queuing to go buy madomas. Another queue for cucumbers. Sure. So they have managed to put those structures. Yes. And you speak, um, which I'm happy to hear, you speak of the synergies between yourselves and government mm -hmm. and say that yes. So imagine now if council does its part where there is running water and the sewage is sorted out, then government comes and says, all right, we'll assist you then with ZRP or any kind of officials. They don't have to wear uniform. Mm -hmm. But just to assist for the markets to work properly so that those eco that part of the economy doesn't die. Yes, that's why I'm saying um, through devolution funds, government has given us uh, something towards building the Coca-Cola tape yeah. where we are saying, we would temporarily close Bezanamo and other, other small uh, to medium enterprise in, uh, shops and then send all the people to Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. In the same time, we will now be upgrading and improving Bezanamo and other markets. You worship, because Vanish was so very company ash. But she took out remained could the government yet very ramisika. Pakaita cholera outbreak, government yatatsa. You know, they accuse Ministry of Health for a cholera outbreak as though it comes from government, as though government woke up and planted cholera. Yeah. Meanwhile, people don't understand yeah. that how cholera is spread, right? Through water, through that contact, and through poor sewage. Whereas yeah. that is you. So you watch all of this happening, even what you're saying makes so much sense when you sit there and say it. It was actually said last year when we had to close all the, the, the seekers. Mm. And we said, this is what we are going to do. Mm. But however, the problem that I also understand is that is where the life roads are. Correct. And the economy is actually informal. Correct. So people are, at the end of the day, mm. you are then forced even to temporarily open them mm. because people you, you would have closed the lifeline. Mm. So we will be forced then to go open and close, open, close, open, close, right. and thereby also delaying the developments that we are doing. Mm -hmm.